Tandy calls herself an all-American girl, but she's not a girl at all. Christine has a sexy body that men just love to look at, but there's more to her than meets the eye. You see, Tandy and Christine were born men, and they're here today to compete in the most unusual beauty contest you've ever seen. Sally's Fantasy Female Pageant. Help us crown a winner, next. not like anything you have ever seen. That's a guarantee, your money back. Are you ready for it? Today we're gonna bring you a beauty contest like you've never seen before. We have gathered a group of the most beautiful women together. But you see, the one thing the women have is a secret. The secret is, they are men. It's Sally's fantasy female pageant, and in the next hour, we're going to be seeing some of the skimpiest bathing suits, the most dazzling evening gowns, and the most outrageous costumes worn by our contestants. We've selected three men out of our studio audience to be our judges. They're gonna be keeping score throughout the show. They always do that at beauty pageants, right? Let's get started by welcoming our contestants. Hi, I'm Tandy Andrews, and I'm from the Lone Star State of Texas. Greetings from the Windy City, Chicago. My name is Maya Douglas. Hello, my name is Christine, and I'm from the Big Apple, New York City. Hello, my name is Tanae, and I come to you from Trinidad and Tobago. Hello, I'm Amy DeMilo, and I'm all the way from Mobile, Alabama. Hi, I'm Isabel, coming to you from New York. Hi, I'm Rods Mitchell, coming to you from Barbados. Hi, I'm Tracy. I'm coming from you to the Garden State of New Jersey. Hello, I'm Ming, coming from Columbus, Ohio. Hi, I'm Kateria, and I'm coming to you from Puerto Rico. Hi, I'm Vanessa from New York. Hi, I'm Mercedes from Chicago. agree it is amazing how gorgeous our contestants are. I must admit, however, we found out that there were three contestants who have to be disqualified because they are not transsexuals, they really, or pre-ops, they are really women. And after all, we're calling this a fantasy female pageant, so we need to send them home. Is there anyone in our studio audience who can pick out the real women that were, you think you can do it? All right, help me. Oh, I have to pick out all three, okay. Isabel, um, Tandy, and Roz. I think it's Roz, uh, Isabel, and uh, Christine. What do you think? Um, I'm gonna say Isabel, Tracy, and Roz. Will the three real women please step forward? Roz, they got? <laughs> Ming, they didn't get you at all. Isabel, kind of, and Roz, they got you. That's terrific. Thank you, you're gorgeous. Next pageant, I promise. <laughs> What we're going to do is send some of our contestants backstage to get ready for the most outrageous swimsuit competition you've ever seen. We want you to get to know the first four contestants in our pageant a little bit better. I'm taking lessons from Bob Barker. Meet Christine, Tandy, Tanae, and Maya. They are undoubtedly beautiful, but they were not born this beautiful. The girls you're looking at are pre-operative transsexuals. Now what that means is they have male organs but they live their lives as women, most of them. We'll explain as we go along. Tandy, we're gonna start with you. You've been living as a woman for about seven years. Tell me about this transformation process. 
Well, it started about seven years ago, and what I decided was is that um, there's a stage that I call an in-between stage, and it's where I don't really know if you look like a boy or kind of a girl, because at some point going through this, you have to start living as a woman, only to, you know, mentally start, you know, preparing yourself. So rather than put my family through that, I decided to leave. So I lost six years of my family. I kept in touch with them, we wrote, and we talked on the phone, corresponded, but they never really saw me. And I didn't really want them to see me until I was just about to the end. I okay. wanted them have to they seen you now? Oh, yeah. They yeah. have. Now, you worked as a professional dancer. You danced on American Bandstand as a woman or a man? A boy. A boy, okay. And dance fever. And when you're in a relationship, at what point do you disclose what is unusual about you? I was just in a relationship. We're separated now. It was six years. And when I met this man, uh, we dated for a while. And there was really nothing serious going on, so there was no need to tell him. And I really don't think there's any need to tell anybody unless there's some sexual. sort of, if there's any kind of intimacy, then it should be exposed. But if not, I don't see why you should reveal yourself. So in that relationship, I told him, and he thought about it. And then he said, well, I guess, you know, <laughs> <laughs> he said, this you is crazy, <laughs> but he said, you know, maybe I'll have to make some, you know, changes to deal with, you know, what we have to deal with. But I find that telling men, if I'm interested in them, the best way to do it is just to tell them. Because the first thing they think when you beat around the bush, well, there's something I have to tell you. First thing they think is, you're pregnant. You're married. You're just something totally different than what they're going to get. It doesn't occur to them that no, uh, you're going to say, no, no, no. I'm one of you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Christine, what about your relationships with men? Do you wait if you're going to uh, have I only intimate... wait till the point where it starts getting physical. If I see that the relationship with the man is going to get physical, then I feel the need to tell him because I feel he should know what he's getting into. Do you tell him? Ha, just before the relationship? Just be, no, just before the first kiss. I go, oh, baby, wait a minute. I have to tell you something. <laughs> I don't think we should do this so we have a little conversation. And, and then I tell him, and you know. For, I don't think you that feel the mouth really first. that. I don't, you feel a man out first and see. I don't okay. think that it's really that important to tell them when you first meet them. Yeah. What, what usually mm -hmm. happens is, you know, you go out on a date and. From there, you can deduce whether or not you like this person to see them again, and you get vibes, and if you feel like there's, like, a sort of chemistry, then, you know, that's when you should tell them. At and, that you know, moment. And okay. you can also tell yeah. whether you should say something or yeah. not, because yeah. you yeah. can pick up when a man is going to yeah. be able to be very open-minded and understand, and then you can pick up when he says, things and you know you, never mind yeah. <laughs> because next time you can you can judge it may it. not be that important to tell him at times because uh, the date may go wrong and you may not really like him he may not really like you so yeah. then there's no harm in it so why not just thing. continue yeah. let me give you a little background tandy is from texas 38 28 39 she's 27 years old she's been living as a woman for six to seven years some hormones, some silicone, some electrolysis. In fact, almost didn't make it to the pageant because of some spots. Oh, Christine is 23, <laughs> born in Puerto Rico. Which, where in Puerto Rico? Uh, Santurce. In Santurce, that's near San Juan. Lives in New York, 36, 26, 38, and has been living as a woman for eight years. Hormones, no surgery. Works as a makeup artist and a model. Do the people who are your clients, do they know they do not. It's going to be surprise, surprise. Okay. For some mothers, too, I think. Tane, am I saying it right? Tane. Tane, 20, born in New York, 34, 26, 38, has been living as a female for three years, is a professional dancer. When you told your father you wanted to be a dancer, what was the uh, outcome? Um, well, my, fa my stepfather, it was, it was, um, he was, a tractor trailer driver, so he thought that I was going to be this big man. I was going to either be in construction or I was going to be a doctor or a lawyer. And I told him, Daddy, I want to be a dancer. And I never forget the look on his face. He said, A dancer? Boy, why do you want to be a dancer? I said, Because I just want to dance. 
He said, you're gonna grow up to be a sissy boy. Well, Dad, that's the way it goes. <laughs> Maya is 30 years old, born in Chicago, 38, 28, 39, has been living as a female for six years, has been an entertainer for about 12 years, uh, has been mistaken for a little girl when you were growing up? Um, ever since ever since I was a baby, I've always been mistaken for a little girl. My parents always had to um, correct people, tell them, you know, oh, it's our little son here, you know. How, so how, was, uh, what's the attitude of the family now? Um, they're very um, supportive, which is wonderful, which, you know, helps a lot, especially when you're going through this transition. Do you they keep were in touch with me. them? All the time. My brother lives with me, my 18-year-old brother. And <laughs> he's very understanding. I mean, before I came to the show, I had to tell him because he assumed that looking like this, and after these six years I was gone, he assumed that everything was completed. So I had to sit down and talk to him and explain everything to him. And I was amazed at the sensitivity of this, this young man. He said, that's it? That's all he you said, have to tell me? That's all he said? I thought you were going to tell me something like you were going to leave again. And I wasn't going to have you around. Oh. You know, so that, it's worth Aww. it. Later in our show, our women will compete in talent and evening gown categories. And coming up next, the moment of truth. Right now, we're going to do the swimsuit competition. So please, don't go away. We'll be right back. of madness we're back with the, what i believe could be a television first nine of the most beautiful women you've ever seen vying for the title of sally's fantasy female for 1992. now what that means is the women are not exactly women they will be someday they are pre-operative transsexuals now let's see what they look like in swimsuits we're going to start our swimsuit parade with tandy I would not know they were born as men. In a way, it's kind of discouraging, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, all the dieting in the world isn't going to make that work for me. Well, we want you to now meet Amy, Tracy, Kateria, Vanessa, and Mercedes. And we talked with the other women about what made them decide to change their bodies and start living as women. Tracy is very interesting. Tracy worked for many years as a very famous runway model. You know, you always hear those rumors that some of the runway models aren't women. You're right. And she worked a lot in Europe. Uh, did you have to keep the sexuality a secret? And what happened in the dressing room? I did have to keep the sexuality a secret um, because I wanted to continue my career as a fashion model, which I have worked for in Paris, New York, and I've been in major magazines. Um, Nothing happens in the dressing room because all the women walk around in high heels, panties, and G-strings, so you don't see the panty line. So I didn't have a problem there. My problem came about um, as my career was taking off. My problem came about um, through a phone call to my agent, which um, they told them what I was, 
and so my agent just stopped sending me out and I left New York to uh, work in Paris which I worked for a major designer in his showroom. Do you know who did that to you? Uh, would... Yes, I do. It's a hairdresser that I have been working with over six months. Uh -huh. for... and somebody was just so mean-spirited that they would do something Well, like yes, that. jealousy comes in all forms. Yes, now your mother is in the audience, is that correct? Bobby? Yes, she is. Bobby, there you are. Yeah. Not bad at all. How are you doing? One of the questions people always ask is, and what do your parents think of this? gorgeous. Yeah, she really is. She's always been gorgeous, and she's always been she. And even when she was he, she's always been she. Yeah. Has this caused you to be closer or not as close? Very close. Very protective. Very close, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, mother's pretty nice. Pretty good. Heads in the right place. Did we say that uh, Tracy comes from New Jersey? It's only fair, showing that we're taking people from all different places. Let's go to Amy. Hi Amy, there. Amy, you're 29 I'm and Florida, uh, born in Florida, now live in Alabama, right? Yes, Alabama the beautiful. It's a wonder wonderful state. Well, I wanted to tell you something, Sally, though. Once I worked in Buffalo, I was working in a hair salon. I went and uh, applied for a job. I had no makeup on. I was dressed just casually and I got hired. I started working. And I became real uncomfortable because they weren't clear that I was a male. And I didn't know really how to tell them because I became kind of friends with them and personal conversations had taken place. And I was real uncomfortable. And then I quit my job just because I didn't know how to break it to the people. Sometimes. And that's what I'm here for is to be able to express myself because I'm not ashamed of myself. And I want America to love me and the, my fellow sisters. But sometimes... <laughs> It is the truth. Sometimes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sometimes it's, uh, some of us feel comfortable sometimes hiding it, yeah. uh, but some of us do feel comfortable you letting know, them know. I've, I've recently acquired a job uh, for the Department of Sanitation, the wonderful world of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I walked in for the interview. I was hired, and they didn't know anything, and I went, they, gave, they assigned me to my desk. And I sat there and I said, I can't do this. Someone's, you know, I mean, so I got up and I said uh, to the boss, um, I must talk to you. And he says, oh, what's the problem? I said, it's going to be very brief, hopefully. So I told him, um, listen, um, because he had said to me, I, you, you haven't worked in a long time. I said, yeah, I've had a little problem getting a job. He says, why? Your credentials are so good. I said, well, you know, and then I says to him, well, the reason why I, I never got hired anywhere else is because not everybody is willing to hire a pre-op transsexual. In my experience, it's been a little different. Um, I've also worked in retail um, for designer shops here in New York. And what happened was is that it makes people a little uncomfortable when not, they're not aware of who and what you are. And when they find out differently, they have a negative act reaction to you. Let me ask you something. It's that, it's that skit on Saturday Night Live where they keep having this person come on and they don't know whether it's a man or a woman. Pat, yes. right? So it, in that way, Pat lives. By the way, Kateria, who was telling you about, are you still working in the sanitation department? Yes, I department? am still working there. And uh, I have two bosses. And they I know. decided I wanted them both to know. But they said, I don't feel uh, anyone else. You should tell anyone else. It's really no one's business. Good for two And in guys. fact, yes. he says, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful to you for being honest with me, but you didn't have to do this. No. And I said, but I feel more comfortable. I don't want you looking over, over your shoulder to see what I'm up to. You know, because sometimes they, they, sure. they look at you and say, oh, a woman. But then, you know, the, then they say, well, I don't know. Amy. And, and then, of course, they're going to have maybe, I don't know, worries. I didn't Amy's want... mother is also in the audience. Um, how, Anne, very nice to meet you, Anne. Was it always in your mind that there was something different about Amy? Yes, since birth. Um, she's always been very special. Um, it took special me a long too. time after we really came out with her life child as what she her, she wanted to choose, okay? My problem was dealing with Amy was taking my baby away from me. 
Okay, and so. I had to overcome that because it's the same person. She's full of love. She's wonderful. Yes, yeah, she She's was, Sally, she was really nervous the first time I ever told her, oh, it's on hormones. She says, are you crazy? I said, no, and I didn't see her for like two years, and I had started hormones, and I had developed breasts, and my hair was getting long, and I've always been prissy. And I went home, and she says, you know, I'm really happy. I can tell you, you are the, still the same person. You've only changed your appearance. Yeah, and that's that, true with all of us, I really think. That's what worked. Thank you. The same thing happened Mercedes, to me. let me talk to you okay. for a minute. Um, how are things going with Mercedes? Mm -hmm. Things are going fabulous. I've just stitched up things with my family, and I'm very happy now because for three years I had gone through a phase where I couldn't talk to my family because I was going through the transition. So it's very difficult, but now I'm, I'm with my family. One Thanksgiving, I just broke down. I couldn't take it any longer, so I called them. And we spoke. I went to see them, and they were very receptive of me. You didn't talk to your parents for three years. No, so. because they really don't understand. They think there's a problem that they have did. Sure. And it's not, I mean, because even as a child, I've always felt alienated. And when they would, society would tell me to go with women and be one way, when mentally I was thinking another way. You know, Sally, most of us do that. We run away from our families only because um, we're afraid of what their reaction is going to be, or maybe because we feel they're going to stop us. And at that point, we don't want to hear no. Well, I'll okay. tell you, but, we, but, but, roommate is Vanessa, right? You haven't said anything, Vanessa, and we're out of time. She's so can quiet. I, can I, I just, just get Vanessa to talk to us a little bit? Go ahead, girl. Tell is she shy, you. Kateria? I She's shy. Yeah. All right. Maybe we'll just leave you as the strong, <coughs> silent type. <laughs> I don't know if you say that about women. Before we go to the break, I want to introduce our first talent entry in the pageant here from Texas. This is, uh, I think you will find, a hot exotic dance number. Please welcome Tandy. <laughs> female pageant and it's time for the evening gown competition and with me to help commentate is Danny Weintraub he is a professional pageant producer and a stylist who specializes in the art of female impersonation so he's the one to ask are there really beauty pageants for transsexuals well yes Sally there are currently three in the United States today and uh, they're held in different parts of the country and today we wanted to bring you a little bit about what they're all about. Absolutely fascinating, because I don't think, I, I'm thinking most people have not seen this. Um, yes, it, it, it's, it's held in, in, if you will, the private sector. Um, it, they are open to the public. Uh, they're just now becoming really, really the craze, uh, bringing back the entertainment aspect in the art. That's what we're going to be doing also as we go along. Should we start that evening gown competition? Here to kick things off, by the way, they are men, are the hot men of the 90s from New York City's club, Roxy. This is Mike Ambro, Tony Caprice, and Tracy Jones. Let's start the evening gown competition. Come on out, Tracy. She's wearing an emerald green beaded dress by Judith Ann Creations. When I look at her, it's very hard to believe that this elegant creature was once a boy. Tracy's modeled successfully in Europe on the runways of Rome, Milan, and Paris. Thank you, Tracy. 
Amy is beautiful in this red beaded gown. Oh. I had the pleasure of meeting her when she was competing in a, for a national title in one of the pageants. She combines her beauty with her southern charm. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> this, this is Mercedes. She and I were walking one day when a man in a car rear-ended the car in front of him because he was so taken with her. He looked at her and he said, well, you're worth it, baby. And she said, if he only knew. Thank you, Mercedes. <laughs> this is Vanessa. I met Vanessa when she was 18 and a shy little boy in a disco. You can see Vanessa now. She's no longer shy or a boy. Thank you. And now Christine, she's exotic, elegant, and more of a lady than most of the women I know. She has an incredible addiction to buying shoes. She probably will rival Imelda Marcos one day. She's wearing a simple black sheet with beads. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Maya comes to us from Chicago, where she performs at the Bataan Show Lounge. Uh, that's where she met her current boyfriend. When he came to see the show with his girlfriend, he sent his girlfriend home in the cab and stayed to meet Maya. By the way, she made her gown herself. Thank you, Maya. This is Kateria. Kateria has, really has style. She incorporates her great sense of humor in everything she does. Kateria has done some plus size modeling and that is proof that big is beautiful even if you are a boy. Thank you, Kateria. The island of Trinidad Tobago has given us Tanae. She is a very talented dancer and when she auditions, she does so as a woman. She wait once the day when she can audition and the sexual orientation will not get in the way of her talent. Thank you. And last, we have Tandy. She just, Tandy just went with me to my niece's wedding. And all of my male relatives made fools of themselves over her. And now I think their wives and girlfriends will have the last lap. She currently holds one national title. And after today's pageant, she's going to be going on competing for Miss Gay USA held in San Antonio, Texas. Thank you, Tandy. Don't all these girls look great, Sally? You know, say something. Uh, I have seen a lot of beauty pageants. I've never seen gowns this beautiful. The regular beauty pageant gowns are not as outrageously wonderful. These are the best gowns I've probably seen ever. Honestly. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. So far, we've seen our contestants in swimsuits and evening gowns. And now it's time to find out who our judges selected for the six finalists in the fantasy female competition. John, have you come to a decision? Yes, Sally, but it wasn't easy. Uh, uh, as I'm about to announce your name, please step up to the microphone. And the finalists are Tandy. Christine. Maya. Tracy. Kateria and Amy. It was a tough decision, but somebody's got to make it. Back to you, Sally. Thank you, judges. When we come back, we're going to see more talent competition. Don't go away. front of your television set. This is our fantasy female pageant. Now we're going to continue with our finalists in the talent competition. And here to kick things off is a lady who came all the way, my mother said I'd wind up this way, from the Batten Show Lounge in Chicago, Illinois, performing Wind Beneath My Wings from the Windy City. Welcome, Maya. <laughs>
That was Maya from Chicago, Illinois. And now from Mobile, Alabama, Amy with one of her favorite songs, I Enjoy Being a Girl. When men say I'm sweet as candy, as a round in a dance we were, it goes to my head like brandy. I enjoy being a girl. Not bad, right? You got it. <laughs> Proud mom. Thank you, Amy. We're going to continue with the talent competition when we return. We're getting closer to crowning a winner. Have you picked one yet? We'll be right back. Jonathan's 14, Shirley's 44, and they're married. I don't look at him as 14. But his brother and her son are shocked. I just can't believe it. All that matters is I love her. This is not love. You two need help. This is sexual child abuse. This is what we're fighting in our country, and you're doing it. Just because you're married doesn't make it right. A 14-year-old boy married to a 44-year-old woman. Next, Sally. Welcome back to our fantasy female pageant, continuing our talent competition with a dance routine from Arthur in the Afternoon. Please welcome Kateria. competition from our finalists, so that's the way it goes. We're not going to get to everyone. Last, not least, performing I Want You, welcome Tracy. Today. That's all the time we have for our talent competition, and when we come back, the judges will make their final decision about who will be Sally's fantasy female of 92. Each contestant will be asked a question that will decide the winner. The tension is mounting. Don't go away. <laughs> It's an all-out battle of the sexes. We're doing all the giving, and they're doing all the taking. And they're fed up with their self-centered husbands. Look what he has on his finger for his wedding anniversary. When all she got was a 50-cent card. He is so selfish, it's, it's got me up to here. Meet wives who are packed and ready to walk out on their selfish husbands. Next, Sally.
We want to thank you for staying with us today. We're going to crown Sally's Fantasy Female 1992. But first, the judges uh, have requested the privilege of asking our finalists some questions. Now, finalists, when your name is called, we want you to step forward to the microphone, answer a question from the judges. And the only thing we ask is you really have to keep it kind of brief. Joe, go ahead. Uh, first question is for Kateria. To the mic, please. Many of you have faced some societal prejudices um, because of your sexual sexuality. Um, what would you say to break those barriers? Well, all our lives we strive to live um, with dignity and respect. And I believe if we got a little bit of that respect back, that would make a big difference. Thank you. Thank you, Kateria. Yes. My question is for Christine. Most of your parents support your decisions to live as women. And uh, some parents can't seem to accept having transsexual children. And uh, what advice can you give to this, us about that? Well, I feel having children is something sacred, and you should stick by their decisions no matter what they may be. Thank you. The third question is to Amy. Amy's our shy one, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to become a woman, to become a woman, you undercame a number of changes. What was the single most difficult change you had to endure? I would have to honestly say the most difficult change was accepting the change myself and dealing with you, the public. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> and. Tandy, this question's for you. Earlier, Tracy told us that she lost her job as a model because of her sexuality. Um, what would you do if you were fired if you, uh, since you were transsexual? Well, I thank God that I haven't been faced with that problem, but I would probably have to deal with it the best way I can. That's why I'm hoping by promoting something like this that in the future, transsexuals won't have to worry about being a transsexual just if they're qualified for the job. Thank you, Tandy. And Tracy, Tracy, what to you is the biggest advantage to living as a woman? The biggest advantage of living as a woman for me was the blessing that was installed upon me by um, experiencing the fashion, the travel, and the excitement of the fashion world. Thank you. And the last question is to Maya. If you had a child who decided they wanted to change their sex, what advice would you give to them? Um, the first thing I would have to tell them would be to definitely think about it because it's going to be the most important decision you're going to make in your life. And once they decide to, I will always be there to stick by them, to love them and support them. Thank you, Maya. Danny, some questions that I think um, our uh, female audience is interested in. The clothing uh, that they wear, with, that you and I were commenting upon, is really pretty wonderful. I know Maya makes a lot, a lot of her own gowns. When they shop for clothing, and they were born men, and they are about to become women, what's the fashion problem that they run up against? I would have to say the most common is hem length, uh, sleeve length. Um, you can see by their body shapes, their, their backs are, are similar to any women. Um, people would assume that men have broader backs. Um, the bone structures are there. Um, so the length, meaning because of their height and because of the length of their arms, that's really the only, everything else would kind of fit? Yes, I think that if, if a woman is shopping for a gown like this, um, she would never just wear it off the rack. She would always alter it to fit. Her body an example perfect. of altering. For example, let's look oh, at Maya's gown. Okay, take Maya's gown. Um, Maya, could you do a turn for me, please? The, the gown is fitted to her waistline perfectly to accent the exact shape of her body. The sleeves are full to cover up maybe a little bit of a fuller upper arm. But you can see that the cut accents all the right things about her figure, the godet in the back for drama. Um, it just creates a total package. So that may have been a gown that was a sleeveless, strapless gown, and she would add the sleeves. They always alter it in some way, making it a custom gown. Well, let's say you found that garment, you couldn't live without it, and the, the hem is three inches too short, and you wanted to wear it. Um, you would, like, let's say Maya's gown, 
Maybe she cut the bottom of the dress off. She added the rhinestone trimming, and she added the black velvet bottom and the sleeves to create a very elegant evening gown um, to a gown that really didn't look good because of the length was too short. I asked um, the very nice lady, I want to give her some credit, who is responsible for a lot of these gowns, uh, what price range they're in, in case any of us would like to look like that. What price range? Generally around $800 to $2,500 retail. But they don't mind spending money, do they? Not at all. They like class, elegance, and beauty. Not bad. When we come back, we're going to crown the winner. Don't go away. <laughs> Does your husband think he is Mr. Fix-It and he really cannot fix anything? Okay, call me. Tell me your story. Tom Arnold made a promise about the man who sexually molested him. I'm going to confront him. A promise he's kept. Tom Arnold, I confronted my molester exclusively next Sally. If you'd like your own video cassette of today's show for only $19.95, call 1-800-FOR-SALLY for a transcript send $3 to 1535 Grant Street, Denver, Colorado, 80203, or call 303-831-9000. This is the neat moment in any beauty pageant, the moment we've been waiting for. Have you come to a decision as to who should be Miss Sally Fantasy female? Yes, sir. Isn't easy, is it? No, it isn't. Me and the guys, uh, all the girls are beautiful. Their gowns, their performances. Um, they all did a great job, but we... Uh, we talked it over and we finally came out with a winner and here's the envelope. All right, our winner will receive a beautiful custom-made beaded gown valued at over $1,000 from the designer we talked to, Judith Ann. Judges, this is the envelope. Okay, open it up. We're gonna have you take your victory walk down the runway. The second runner-up is Maya. <laughs> First runner-up is Tandy. And the winner of the Sally Fantasy Female Pageant for 1992 is Tracy. Some members of our audience will receive and a promotional fee has been provided by 